Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless 8, and this is the end of the day report, and a very important one, a very critical one, and a very educational one for September 10th, 2015. A couple of quick observations on the market and a couple of behavioral finance uh, issues that I deal with every single day, and most of you should deal with and also learn from and benefit from number one the markets are not linear beings i'm going to be going over this chart for the whole 15 minutes i'm going to show you all the different things that happen but more importantly we're going to talk about what i'm going to try to explain in these 15 minutes um as to why things don't always work at our own time and regardless of our best technical expertise intraday on short-term trades they don't always work out the way it should be and today was a prime example so do you look at that as something negative or do you look at that as something positive because you learned something about from it that you can utilize and not repeat the next time or maybe reinvent and 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 improvise and make better for the next uh, for the next day the bottom line is that every single day in the market is a learning event I don't want to sound to my favorite term you know uh, 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 what's the name uh, Tony Robbins and uh, and all those motivational speakers and stuff but the reality is that every single moment that we are doing things whether it be trading whether it be working or on our business or whatever the case may be working on our relationships um, it is a learning experience that's the way I look at life so let's take a look at what happened today we opened the day we had Terrible stuff coming out overseas. Uh, Europe was down, you know, was down. Nothing severe, but it was down. We had uh, moderate to crappy numbers out of China on the on their CPI data. Uh, we had David Tepper, the ultimate hedge fund manager, whose words rock markets basically come out at, at the open, 8 a.m. pre-open, and basically his whole tone was cautious not something like he normally is which is a charging bull at the right times and I do respect his work mind you he's not a fed hater he's not a dogmatic bear but he's a bull and he's saying be cautious so starts off the day like that we had a Brazil downgrade last night we had futures which basically um you know, uh, went uh, 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 went crazy yesterday. We were we we literally you know collapsed by the end of the day, and everything looked like it was going to be a negative opening. So what happened? So here is what happened in simple terms. Forget all the technical mumbo jumbo and all the things that I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes. What really happened was professional traders right there in Chicago, around the world in the US including me intraday I'm talking about I'm not a dogmatic bear you guys all know that I'm a tactical bear we all got shoved into one little room we all got a little too bearish on what we saw out there okay so one little room everyone squeezed in in other words the the pendulum swung too far to the right on the bearish short side well guess what the machines did and this is what I try to teach every single day this is what I try to do every single uh, uh, weekend when I do the group advanced coaching sessions explain to people out there humans people like yourself that you know what it doesn't matter what we think it's the bottom line internals it's all the different factors which algos and hfts drive on which is go against what the prevalent feeling is so the prevalent feeling for today i'm not saying that i'm not going to be right tomorrow on my basis that we're going to go to about 190 on that uh, on the spies okay or 1900 and s p 
I'm talking today. Everyone got too crowded and got too caught up with their emotions to got too bearish. And guess what? The algorithmic high frequency trading programs jammed them hard. You hear that? Jammed them hard. And that's it. So you're down a little bit, you're going up a little bit, you're coming down and bang, they take the market up 160 points. We hit certain technical levels. I show that directly through my Periscope broadcast, through my spy tech, uh, tactical charts. On the shorter term time frame, obviously you can see that here because there's a running tail here, but that's where we hit the highs, okay? And bang, we come down. Everyone thinks, oh my God, it's all over. We're down like 15, whatever. I cover my shorts. Net-net on the intraday stuff, I still had a minor loss. The key word is minor. I didn't have a major loss because at the time we were up 160, I added more puts. You guys saw that on the Twitter real-time feed, right? Got to follow it. So I came out with a minor loss, and I'm not happy about it. But it doesn't matter. There is a bunch of dogmatic shorts who got creamed today. And right when it was 15, one of our great members, one of our newer players, I talked to him after the market, you know, he's like, I get worried when Clue covers his shorts. Laughing out loud. Great stuff, man. Right after that, the market turns around, goes up 76 points. So what I'm trying to get at is I'm not going to show every single level because your job is to spend about 15 minutes at the end of the day, 15 minutes, that's all it's going to take, which is going to make your trading wallet fatter. Go through every single one of my posts and specifically my charts and the recent Periscope uh, broadcast, which I take time to do it because I want people to see in real time what's going on. Invaluable stuff. So the bottom line is that when you see all that, you'll see exactly where the upper gap was was touched and reversal candles happen because i'm watching three different platform and 60 different indicators and i'm trying to broadcast what i think is going to benefit my members and free trial subscribers if that's not value added service i have no idea what it is and it's all visual it's not just a word that's going out there buy sell buy sell so anyway so from a behavioral standpoint, that's what happened in simple terms. Pro traders, I just shot out a Twitter feed right now from CNBC, which I thought was relevant, where it says, where I put my own words in there, algos fool technical traders, as charted. Expect pre-walk, uh, uh, pre-weekend caution after head fake rally. Head fake rally. Maybe it's a head fake rally. I don't know. Because there's other stuff going on underneath on the global front, which might say that it's not a head fake rally. So you will need me more than anything else to navigate these markets over the next couple of weeks, over the next couple of months, going into the end of the year and more. Because I'm a fast reader and I'll be straightforward. I'll tell you when to cover. I'll tell you when to get the hell out of Dodge on the short and long side. But right now, the sentiment is so negative. That is exactly why what happened today. So let's get back straight into the technicals. So here we are from last October's low. Let's go over some key uh, 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 points here and simple things that I draw. This is your major crash low right there, Dow down 1100 point. I mean, sorry, last October. This is now. This, uh, uh, this uh, 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 what was it, August 24th. Massive, right? 1100 point flash crash, back up. And we've been overall making net net. I've had some of my best weeks. Because this volatility is insane. But if you tactically trade as I'm doing, long, short, long, short, you're not going to be right every single time. I wasn't right on my intraday short today. I did really well on PANW, the ER play. Facebook went berserk. So the point is that when you make 114, 120% on calls on Palo Alto, I guess I didn't have any great uh, big positions. You know, I had comment that I sold yesterday for 8 plus after market. Should have held on. It went up 13 plus. Big deal. The calls went up 114%. That's the way you do it. Anyway, 
the bottom line is that intraday, trying to hope and wish that the market comes down doesn't do anything. It's all about technical levels. So let's take a quick look at what's going on here. I got five minutes to cover this and I want everyone to focus really hard. Please, this is just gonna make your wallets fatter as you go forward on your trading and what you're trying to do. So here we are. And if you notice what's going on here, this is what you call intense volatility. Levels are the same. Lower level is 182.53. Let's call it 182.50 on, uh, on the spies. Look at the spies here, which is the general market. You have here, you have 190.43. On the upper end, you have 199.89. Call it 190, call it 200. That's the trading band that we're moving on, period. That's it, nothing to it. So let's zoom in. So here was yesterday, up a lot and then gave back a lot. We made money. We made money at selling the calls, S&P calls from the previous day up here, shorting midday, making some real decent money, 60, 70, 80%, some cases more on the short side. Today, this was it. So what does this tell you? This is almost an inside day, not completely. So it is true. There's a seasonal factor involved. It's a 9-11 commemoration tomorrow. For God's sakes, I almost got blown away on that particular day. I passed through with the World Trade Center at 8.35, 8, I'm sorry, 8.15, between 8.15 and 8.20 that morning. 8.35, the world went nuts and changed, right? So I respect what goes on. I had friends there. I was lucky that I survived. So the bottom line is that it is a deep emotional event for the United States of America. And I don't believe that the markets are in a mood to cause more angst and anxiety by crashing on 9-11 or the day before. Maybe I'm wrong. Bottom line is, this is what's going on, right? Now, here are the internals. And this was the tell. The internals never gave a confirmation they wanted to crack. And if I change this color here and make it a little bit, uh, uh, let's say, green right there. The internals clearly show that there was a positive divergence going on regardless of these fluctuations that was going on during the day. And those internals are still telling me that the market wants to go a bit higher. What's a bit higher? Maybe engagement with the with uh, uh, the five day, uh, this is the five day moving average. Maybe engagement with uh, the 34 here at 203 maybe to the 50, because the standard deviation away from the 50 and the 34 day moving averages, which means how far they have moved away from the path, as I like to explain in my coaching sessions, that if you're driving on a road and you veer away and, and get away from the lane, you want to get back in the lane. Well, this is the lane that the market wants to follow, the 50 and the 34 day moving averages. Well, guess what? We moved away a lot from there. Is it possible? But that's what normally happens. Reversion to the mean, which is get close to it? Absolutely. What is this orange line? Most importantly, I've shown this many, many times. This is the breakout line that happened on November 5th. Look at the date below, right there. Okay, November 5th, right there. November 5th of 2014. And trust me, that was one of the best uh, multi-month money, money maker ever. So the bottom line is, what I'm getting at is internals do matter. These, the vortex indicator is still not showing a breakdown. The green line is still moving up. On the macro global economic front, what I call macro global economic uh, game theory, there's a bunch of stuff going on which might be construed as positive. In fact, it is positive. The Chinese premier is on his knees telling the world, that it's okay. They're going to do whatever it takes to keep the Chinese economy afloat. They're saying the Chinese economy is completely tied in with what's happening in the global economy, which is true. So if he's going to prop up his economy, why won't the rest of the world benefit? So guys, there's a lot of stuff going on aside from technicals. I am not a dogmatic bear. I'm a tactical bear. Depending on what happens, because if you're a pure technician, this is a negative formation. It means we're going to test this. But if you are a tactical, multifaceted, clueless eight type of tech, uh, technical trader, it tells you that we probably go higher before we go lower. I'm going to end this uh, video cast with that. Everyone, please review every single chart and Periscope video broadcast. 
Thank you for listening.